Infectious in the wild pollinators and um, bumblebees, and they were form wing virus and uh, microsporidium called Nemesis serrani. My project is on Nemesis serrani. It's the most virulent of two species that cause nosmosis and has been um, associated with colony collapse disorder. So, although the general life cycle of Nemesis serrani is known, the molecular mechanisms of pathology is not. And what we want to know is, how does Nacima serenae subvert host innate immunity? How does it manipulate host um, resources for its own purposes? And as you've heard previously from Nick and earlier from Tom, pathogens can secrete um, an arsenal of effectors that target, that target multiple processes um, to modulate host physiology. Now, this is um, pretty good information, but at the moment, there's absolutely no information on microsporidium effectors. But when the genome for Nacima serenae was published in 2009, the authors identified a cohort of genes that have a signal peptide. And we can consider those the secretome. And our hypothesis is simply that within the secretome, there's going to be effectors essential to pathology. And our aim is that we want to increase fundamental knowledge of the disease so we can move towards mitigation and we're going to do that by categorizing these, uh, characterizing these secreted proteins. So, microsporidium are not amenable to genetics. Um, there's no tractable system. So, the tools are limited to sequencing and heterologous expression. So, we've cloned the secretomorphs um, into GFP gateway vectors, expressed them in Saccharomyces, and then assessed them for their fluorescent phenotypes. And interestingly, what we see are these four distinct categories of phenotypes, and I'm showing you a representative here for each. You see the wild type presents standard morphology, no GFP, and in our strains we see abnormal morphology, mesema protein accumulating in the cytoplasm, punctate fluorescence, and mesema protein associated to the cell wall. Um, I'm now going to talk to you about the most significant phenotypes in greater detail. So first, morphology. So most of the proteins that we're characterizing are hypotheticals. There's no known function um, and no homology to known sequences in the databases. But we did also characterize polar tube proteins um, because they have a signal peptide. And what we were amazed to see was that the two polar tube proteins that we managed to express in Saccharomyces actually um, induced this quite um, interesting and you can't deny it's quite uh, amusing. <laughs> um, but they induce this filament formation. Uh, on top of that, we see that polar tube protein 2 actually associates to the cell wall, demonstrated here with the capital Y this morning. Now, beyond that, what was, we were really, really interested to find is that this hypothetical um, produces the exact same phenotype. So we're saying preliminarily that based on this exact same phenotype um, being reproduced, a uh, candidate identity for this protein is a novel polar tube protein. So the next, the punctate fluorescence. So this phenotype it infers direct targeting to specific structures or compartments within the cell. So we adopted the use of the GFP collection library for co-localization studies. And what we observe is that um, our Nacima proteins three and six are co-localizing with Agosteros 6, um, a marker for lipid droplets. 
and that's supported here by these profiles. But we wanted to unpack this relationship a bit further, so they were selected. Those two proteins were selected for SGA analysis using the Singer robot. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so what we found is that Nasima or three, um, they were screened against the Saccharomyces deletion library, and all three has um, synthetic sick um, phenotype in 129 double mutants. The SEMA protein has six, so 173 double mutants is synthetic sick phenotype, and 15 um, shared between the two. Now, when we take our interaction profiles, if we're looking at the data produced by the Boone Lab, we seed our profiles in amongst that data and re-render the network to see that all three seeds itself around proteins, um, these are the blue nodes, um, that uh, enrich the DNA repair damage chromatin transcription. And but we all six kind of nests, there's no obvious cluster near it, it's kind of in no man's land. And that's highlighted when we then zoom in and look at the 40 nodes in closest proximity to our orbs. We see this subcluster for all three enriched for these blue nodes, i.e., these DNA damage repair or chromatin transcription. But there's no real enrichment for the um, all six, no real interconnectivity of those nodes. So there's no smoking gun. Time is up. No smoking gun for uh, chocolate association, but it raises interesting questions for the future. Thank you.